Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm excited this morning. Praise God. Good morning and welcome to Kingdom Word Ministry where we preach and teach the Word of God chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Praise God. Give the Lord a big hallelujah. Glory to his name this morning. Praise God. So let's get right into the Word. The Word will be coming from the book of John, chapter 2, verse 12 through 22, reading from the NIV version. Beginning with verse 12. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brother and his disciples. There they stayed for a few days. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And in temple court, he found men selling cows, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money chargers and overturned their tables. To those who, stood, who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. I dare you to turn my father's house into a market. His disciples remember that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews demanded of him, what miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was risen from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for another day, another opportunity to break bread with your people. God, we're so appreciative, God. That we just want your spirit to, to flow in this place, God, and flow in the heart of those listeners, God, because someone out there needs you this morning, God. So we ask you to let this word fall on good ground, because we're sure that if it fall on good ground, it will come up again, God. Have your way, Jesus. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and redeemer, in Jesus' name, we pray. Praise the Lord. And the body of believers said, Amen. I want to talk to you this morning about cleaning house. Cleaning house. Praise God. That's cleaning house. Amen. Cleaning house is a term used in sports when a person is hired as a new coach. He has the power, he has the authority to clean house. Cleaning house means to get rid of players that are no good for the program. He tried that the program that he is trying to build. He starts by evaluating each position. And once the assessment is made, he determines whether or not what needs to go. But it's also a different when you actually clean in the house. Cleaning the house requires that you have, a, have a, a total commitment of being able to let things go, to be able to get rid of things, praise God. Sometimes it's hard to let the things go that you, that you don't use, but you say it's good. And you've been having it there for a long time, and it's just hard to let it go. But you've got to be able to let it go in order to clean your house, praise God, hallelujah. So I want you to see what Jesus did. Jesus, before he began to clean the house, before he went to work, after he had performed his first miracle, he went down in verse 12 to Capernaum with his mother and his brother and his disciples, and they stayed there a few days. Jesus knew how to take a break. His family and his mother and his disciples, they went down to Capernaum for a few days. Jesus shows us that it's okay. It's okay to relax, praise God. It's okay to rest, praise God. Hallelujah. Rest for a time. Not to 
be lazy but to rest, praise God. Because Jesus knows that rest is a weapon, meaning that once you are revived, once you are fresh, you have an energy to go on, praise God, hallelujah, and do what the Lord say do. Kim said hallelujah this morning. Kim said glory to God. After the rest, the Passover was at hand in verse 13. Uh, and the Passover in verse 13 said that Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And, and the Jews' Passover was at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem during the Passover. Thousands of a quarter of a million people attended the Passover. Any Jew the people that lived within 15 miles of the Jerusalem was required to go to the temple and, and offer a sacrifice and observe the Passover. Many that was not required to go also went, praise God. There was a lot of people coming around during this time. When Jesus arrived at the temple, he saw many things, praise God. It's always important before you try to do anything, before you try to make some correction, before you try to clean up anything, you need to see some things, praise God. Observe, praise God, hallelujah. Glory to God. He saw some things that made him angry, and his reaction was what, what we want to talk about today, praise God. This morning, I want you to ask some question about this and, and this passion and how we can grow from, from knowing the answer, praise God, hallelujah. What thing is he seeing in this church today? What is he seeing in our church today, praise God? There are many things in the church that make him angry, praise God, hallelujah, glory to his name. I know and you know there are a plethora of things that are going on in the church that will, will make him angry today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. In verse 14, he said, in the temple court, he, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables and exchanging money. What did Jesus see that angered him? He saw people. He saw people selling animals. It was not wrong for them to be selling animals for the sacrifice. The problem was where they were selling them. They were selling them inside the temple court. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. The ground that the church was on, the ground that the temple was on, that's holy ground, praise God. In our parking lot today, where the church is set, that is holy ground. We shouldn't allow anything to be on the holy ground. Alcohol and other things that will make Jesus angry this morning, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Holy ground. But the larger problem was how much they were selling the animals for. People had traveled a long way. It was difficult for them to bring animals that for a sacrifice. They was purchasing their animals at an outrageous price. For those who were bringing their own sacrifice, they had to pay to, to have the priest inspect their sacrifice. It was extremely rare for the priest to declare that their sacrifice was perfect. So they ended up purchasing animals that were deemed pure. The scam was on. Praise the Lord. Price gouging. And not only back in those days. Price gouging goes on today. When there's a demand or when there's an emergency, price gouging increases. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Jesus saw this. He saw this going on and it angered him. He saw people exchanging money. Praise the Lord. After another part of scam was the currency. Praise God. The Roman currency had a picture of Caesar on it. Therefore, the religious leader deemed that the Roman money was, was, a, was a sign of worshiping false God. The solution was to, to, for the person to have to exchange the, to the Roman the Roman currency to the temple currency, praise God. The problem was that the exchange process was corrupt. Half of the money that the, the worshiper showed up with was taken by the money exchangers, praise God.
praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. There are all, there are scams going on in the church today. We not be a, might not be a change in money, but we are a scamming. We are scheming how to raise money, praise God. There are professional people that are hired to raise money. Jesus is not pleased with this. But the larger problem was that the angels, Jesus was there, that they was doing the exchange. Praise God. Hallelujah. Where they was doing the exchange. Hallelujah. They was doing the exchange in the, in the courtyard of the Gentiles. It was doing their business in the outer court of the temple, praise God. And it was spoiling only the only place the Gentiles could come and worship God. We allow things to go on in the church. Sinner man comes in the church and he want to come in the church. And the church should be different from the outside world. When you come in there, you should see and feel the presence of the Lord in the place this morning. Give us a hallelujah. Give us a glory to God. Jesus said their area, the court of the Gentiles was made into a house of merchandise, praise God. One place of worship we have turned into the house of merchandise, and God is not pleased with that. Kim said, hallelujah, glory to God. John said in verse 15 and 16, Jesus said, he made a whip out of cord drove all from the temple court, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the corn of the money charges and overturned their table. 16 said, to, to those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. Praise God. When he had made a whip of corn, when Jesus made this whip of cloth, he drove out the them the, the were doing business in the temple court. It tells me something about Jesus took time out. He took time and he made cords, made a whip out of cords. Let, let me know that he didn't, he didn't do this in a flash. He didn't do this in a hurry. He, he didn't do this by thought. He took time out and made a decision to make sure what he was doing was right. We don't need to be hate. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. He wanted to know. The thing that used to trouble me more than anything else was when I was growing up, our mother would tell us to go and get our own switch so she could whoop us with praise God. She had time to think about how and what she was going to do and why she was doing it, praise God. But my daddy was totally different. Whatever he had in his hand, he hit you with. There was no thought pattern. There was nothing going on. He did it out of anger, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to the name. But Jesus, he thought about what he was doing because he took time and made. Jesus was carefully making a whip out of cord, praise God, to do what he needed to do, praise God. What can we learn from Jesus' anger? Ephesians 4 and 26 tells me, it said, Be ye anger, angry, and sin not. Praise God. There's time. There's a time, there's time when we should be angry. That is a right angle, praise God. It's a very important thing to understand. Jesus got angry, but he did not sin. Thank be to God that he did not sin, because if he had sinned, we would have no hope, praise God. Can you imagine what we will do if Jesus couldn't have to sin when he Matt, angry, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God. Jesus said, the word of God said, be, said, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Jesus was angry, but it was a righteous anger, praise God. So he called, so to call the righteous leaders had to turn the temple, turn the temple where the presence of God was into a shopping mall, praise God. A time that we need to be angry, praise God. The challenge is not to, to sin when we are angry. 
Praise God. We don't need to be angry and sin, praise God, but we should be upset about because it's not right, praise God. Just because something is accepted by society doesn't mean God accepted, praise God. It's more important to be spiritually correct than to be politically correct, praise God. Are, you, are your goal to please man or are your goal to please God? Peter said, we ought to please God rather than man. Can we say hallelujah? Can we say glory to God? Remember that the cleaning was part of the Passover celebration, praise God. Jesus was doing what needed to be done. He was cleaning up. You know, removing every speck of anything leaven made with yeast from your house was a symbol of cleaning from sin. Praise God. He was cleaning house. Praise God. We need to clean house. Praise God. We need to check ourselves every day to see whether or not we got anything in our house that God is not pleased with this morning. Give us a hallelujah. Give us a glory to God. John chapter 2, verse 17 through 20 says, His disciples remember that it is written, Zeal for my house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all of this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. They replied to him, it took us 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it up in three days? Jesus showed compassion for his father's house. The zeal for his father's house had, had been eaten at him and eaten on him, and, and sometimes when you something is bothering you that you know is not right, it eat at you, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God. The disciples remember this line from Psalm 69 and connected design to Jesus had, had for the purity of God's house and their worship place. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He had love for the church. He had compassion for worship. He had compassion for God's house being a house of prayer. It's not a marketplace. Give us a hallelujah. Give us a glory to God. What can we learn from Jesus' action? Jesus drove them out. He showed them that it was not going on. He would not allow this to go on. It's even to go on in the church any longer. Pray. God stepped up. Jesus stepped up. Put them out. Praise God. But most important, what does Jesus need to drive out of your life today or this morning? Praise God. What is in your life that is keeping you from, from, from what God wants you to do, praise God, from you going forward this morning, praise God. Christian, believers, praise God, you are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit of God lives within you. Let Jesus drive out those things out of your life that does not belong, praise God. Hallelujah, glory to his name. Proverbs 20 and 27 said, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Such is all the inward parts of the belly. When God does, God knows what is in your heart. He knows the dark spot. He knows the place, the spot that needs to have some light in it. He knows what needs to be cleaned out in your heart and in your life. Allow him to clean it out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Your spirit, praise God, is his light. And he wants that light to shine in your dark part of your belly, praise God, hallelujah. He wanted to come forth. Let him clean it out. Jesus speaks of a new temple, praise God. He speaks of a new temple in his destination. In verse 18, he said, then the Jews demanded of him, what miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to destroy it and raise it in three days? The temple Jesus was talking about was his body, praise God. 
And after he was raised from the dead, his disciples recall what he said. They believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. What I want you to see, they demanded a sign. What Jesus, what sign do you show us since you did these things? The question was not a bad question. The problem is that how they asked the question, they demanded a sign from Jesus to prove who he was. Praise God. Their request was a sign was misguided. What sign could be have more eloquent than that? what he have already showed them and what have all he already done, praise God. That should be a witness enough that he has authority, praise God. Not only he has authority, they can see the authority, there was, there was gods in the place. There was people in there, there was people, people that had rent his face and then Jesus still threw it out. He didn't have the authority, they probably jumped on him, but they knew he had some power and he had some authority, praise God, hallelujah. Glory to the name. Jesus said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will rise it out. Praise God. Jesus spoke of his body. He said, destroy this temple. Jesus was not against the temple, but he was certainly looking beyond it. Praise God. Hallelujah. He told the Samaritan woman at the, at the well, he said, there will come a day when people will no longer worship at the temple in Samaria or Jerusalem, but they will worship God in spirit and truth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to thank God for Jesus. Now we don't have to run to the church. We don't have to run to the temple. We can praise God right where we are. We can worship God right where you are right now. Praise God. Give him praise. Give him glory this morning. Give us a hallelujah. Give us a glory to God. I will Raise it up, Jesus said. Jesus confidently claimed the power to raise himself from the dead. He got up from the dead. His disciples remembered that he had said these things. They believed the scripture. But not only did they said they believed the scripture, but they believed the word of God. But it was only after his death and resurrection of Jesus that his disciples understood and believed both the scripture and his word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus, Jesus gives us an example of how to clean our house. Praise God. Because your body is the temple of God and he will not dwell in an unto. Let Jesus clean your house this morning. Praise God. Let him get the things out of your house that are hindering you from going forth in a praise. They're hindering you in your prayer. Praise God. Let Jesus clean it up because our body is the temple of God and we've been bought with a price. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus paid a price for our body. He paid a price for us to dwell in our body this morning. Can we say hallelujah? Glory to God. He paid that price for you. He paid that price for me. And you can have this cleaning in your body. All you need to do is just ask him to come into your life and repent of your sin and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you can be clean and saved this morning, praise God. The first thing Jesus did in the first two miracles he did, the first thing he was a conversion, praise God. He converted the water to wine. And as he converted the water to wine, he started cleaning, but praise God. God wants you to convert you. He wants you to be saved first, praise God. And he'll clean you up. He will begin to clean your house, praise God. He will start in the places that are the darkest and work all the way out the front door, praise God, hallelujah. He said, I stand at the door and knock up. Any man will let me come in. I will come in and clean that house up. Commune with him and him with me, praise God. You can have that this morning. All you got to do is believe that Jesus died and rose again and now sits on the right hand of the Father. The Bible said, you shall be saved. Give us a hallelujah. Give us a glory to God, hallelujah. Clean your house, man. 
He's cleaning house this morning. Praise God. He want to get all the things that not like him out of the house. Let him clean it. Praise God. You can't clean it by yourself. Turn it over to him. And let him clean it. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this word this morning in cleaning house, God. That you're telling us that we just let you come in. That you will clean house, God. You will take away the things that are not representing you. The things that are hindering the word from going forth in your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We thank you this morning. Those that are listening out there, God. Those that are going through this morning, praise God. Those that have heavy heart this morning. Those that don't know God, how are they going to make it the next minute, God? I ask you to give them strength right now because your word said you never leave them, not forsake them, God. And we said weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you said in your word, if you delight yourself in the Lord, you will give us the desires of your heart, Father. And we have our desires where, God, we want your will to be done. Father, we ask you, God, to touch those that are going through the COVID crisis, God, those that are having loved ones, God, and those that have lost loved ones through this crisis, God. We ask you, God, to give up strength and comfort and assurance, God, that you're in control. This word has been a blessing to you this morning. Praise God. And you feel in your heart. And I just want to make a donation to Kingdom Word so we can keep coming forward with the word. All you need to do is text Kingdom Word to 22525. Praise God. And remember, you will be blessed. And God is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah.